on my big show. Dragon Peter Jones plays Celebrity Center Wall. Hilarious comedy from Ramesh Ranganathan. Flamenco dancing brothers, Los Vivancos. The legend that is, Rod Stewart. And who will be our unexpected star? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the big show. Please welcome your host, Michael McIntyre. Fantastic show for you this evening. Are you up for that? <laughs> I'll be playing my favourite game of them all, Celebrity Centre Wall, yes. Mm. <laughs> and as ever, one person will be getting the biggest surprise of their life when we find out who will be our latest unexpected star of the show. <laughs> this really is a magnificent theatre. I should say hello to everybody at the top. Are you okay up there? Yes! You're not in the best seats. Is there, can everybody see? Is there any? <laughs> That's not gone well. You liked that, didn't you? <laughs> Look how smug you're looking right now. Well, I did get here early enough and I took my seat in the stalls. <laughs> A lot of these old theatres, they have restricted view seating that they sell. I don't know, first of all, why are they seats there? Why do they do that? Who, who sees a pillar at a theatre and just think, we'll just put a seat behind there <laughs> and sell it on the cheap? <laughs> do people feel pleased with getting a bargain? We went out last night to the theatre, I saw The Lion, the Witch. I never saw The Wardrobe, but I did get a great deal on the tickets. <laughs> I saw Snow White and I, I counted four dwarves. Four out of seven, that's good enough for me. The weather's getting nicer. Have you noticed? It's got springy. It's got a bit springy. I've started watching the weather forecast again, because I don't watch it in the winter. I don't see the point. I don't know. Who, who watches the weather forecast? <laughs> it's so boring. It's going to be four and then six in the afternoon. And people watch this going, oh, that's exciting. We should go out in the afternoon. It's going to be six. But now I'm watching it again, because it's getting quite fun. But they do tell you a lot of things you don't need to know. Like, I need to know if it's going to be windy. I need to know the speed of the wind, obviously. I don't think I need to know the direction. Why why do they tell us the direction? It's going to be a stiff north-easterly breeze. I'm not sailing to work. I really don't care. Are people leaving slightly later? Oh, with a tailwind, I'll get there in half the time. This is fantastic. People walking around with compasses. Well, they got that wrong. And I think it's about time they stop with the pressure. Nobody knows what pressure is on the weather. Nobody has any idea what it means. But they keep telling us about the pressure. Oh, there's going to be some high pressure coming in here. <laughs> and the week, there's going to be low pressure. We just go, oh, I don't care. No one's changed their plans according to the pressure. No one's ever shown up. Sorry, I'm late. I got stuck in the pressure. We don't know what it means. I tell you, though, the weather's no good if you live in Scotland or Northern Ireland. Because at the end of every weather forecast, they always go, except Scotland and Northern Ireland. <laughs> Any nice weather at all. You'll have what you're used to rain and misery. The weather's terrible there. I lived in Scotland for about a year. You know, when it gets cold here in England and you can see your breath, you know, because it, it, it's rare, so you comment on it. You know, oh, oh, darling, look, it's cold. Look, children, you can see my breath, it's cold. You do it. It's a novelty. In Scotland, it's like that every day. They actually freak out when they can't see their breath. They panic when they're on holiday. They wake each other up in the night. Oh, sorry, Ken. I thought you were dead. <laughs> I didn't see anything coming out of your face. <laughs> it's so disconcerting here with the temperatures in Lanzarote. <laughs> now it is time for my favourite game in the whole wide world. It's Centaur! 
everybody's mobile telephone, a celebrity indeed. And I send a text of my choosing to their contacts, and then we see what hilarious replies they get at the end of the show. So let's see who's in our celebrity centre wall box this week. Why? It's none other than Dragon's Den's Peter Josie! Michael, <laughs> lovely to see you. Thank you so, so much for being here. You all right, James? Are you enjoying I'm, the show? I'm all right, and I brought my mum here today, Aww. Michael. Oh. Hey. Hello, hi, Mum. It's a special treat. And it was slightly tactical as well, because I knew you wouldn't be horrible to me if I brought my mum here. <laughs> and who's this gentleman? And this is my father, David. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mum and Dad. What an absolute pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Jones' boy's parents. Wow. You are a fantastic sport for agreeing to do this. You are very successful, Peter. We can't deny that. You're in this television show where you invest in businesses. So how many businesses are you now involved uh, in? I, I mean, we've got 28 at the moment. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing to have 28 businesses. <laughs> OK, but you're a very modest and very wonderful person. And I know you personally, and I'm so grateful for you coming here and doing this. And I hope we can remain friends after <laughs> tonight. <laughs> So, oh. what I'm going to do, Peter, is I would like to confirm with you, you have no idea the text that I'm going to send into your phone, you don't know what the text I'm going to write, no, you don't know what the text all. is, and you haven't told anybody in your phone to expect a text of any kind. Well, thank you for doing that. So, if I can ask you to place your mobile into this contraption here, <laughs> which is going... It's a delivery system. If I'm honest, it looks like... Oh, my goodness, you've bought a lot of coats. <laughs> Cold? How many? <laughs> what time's the show start? <laughs> What's the forecast say? <laughs> All right, I've actually quite. So good. here we have this contraption. Which, if I'm honest, it looks like some of the junk people come into Dragon's Den with. <laughs> this probably would just make the montage bit. Earlier tonight on Dragon's Den, we had this contraption for bringing phones downstairs. <laughs> <sighs> All right, here we go. It's coming, coming down now. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I am now in possession of Peter Jones's phone. Jonesy! <laughs> He's my favourite dragon! So, apparently, this should pop up on the screen, uh, now. Yeah! Oh, Peter, you look so tense. Don't worry. You're in safe hands. <laughs> Brain games. Oh, this is classic. Look at that one up there. Brain games. <laughs> We're all looking at this going, we should get these apps because it might make us really rich. <laughs> these are the apps of a rich man. Doodle jump? What are you have to keep jumping. Can all I the play way doodle jump? <laughs> what do I do? Yeah, that's it. What do I do? Turn it. Turn oh, it. that's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, game over! Oh wow! Oh look, it's got advertising. You couldn't even bother to pay for the full game. <laughs> Classic Josie. Unbelievable. Where, oh, photos, that, that seems like that would be the... Oh, my God! <laughs> What's that, Josie? Where's that? That's uh, my house in Barbados. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Peter, where are you? Uh, just doodle jumping in barbs. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, most people, when they're on holiday, take photos of other people on holiday with them. They don't just walk around going, I own that. Brilliant. <laughs> There's nothing wrong oh, with that picture whatsoever, apart from the fact, who's taking it? <laughs> Who, who's taking that picture? I think Tara, my other half, took it to, make, to try and get me in the gym. Right. <laughs> I think you're looking pretty good, Peter. <laughs> I suspect you took that yourself on a timer. <laughs> <laughs> I think you spent quite a long time setting the phone up against the sun lounger 
And then, obviously, when you got on the lilo, it started going in the wrong direction. <laughs> you had to time it just right. Here it comes. <laughs> oh, Jonesy. Oh, my goodness. What's... Who's that? Oh. Is that you? That's me. Oh, my God. <laughs> God, is so, this undercover boss? Yeah, no, so, yeah, so what this was was me going into Jessup's when I first bought it. Your <laughs> life is absolutely <laughs> sensational. So you went in there dressed as a person? Yeah, so I went three hours with prosthetics to try and... so people wouldn't recognise me. Right. And we filmed it undercover to see what it would like, be like to sort of work at the store. And how was it? It was a, a massive experience, but the worst thing was that so many people recognised me. People <laughs> recognise you? And I, yeah, I they recognise you as a hairy biker. I look at that and I... <laughs> I recognise myself as well, which is oh, sad. I love this. There's a lot of fun in your life. Anton Deck. Oh. Anton Deck. Just, What's this about? This was about. This was a, a thing that pitched on Dragon's Den called Tangle Tees. Right. And I said, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. And they text me saying, it's not going to work. It's sold about thirty million pounds worth of product. <laughs> It untangles your hair. And they they use it. Anton Deck. No, they they bought it and texted it to me. Oh, sent wow. a picture to tease oh, me. Oh, look at that. That's cheese Peter Jones about tango tease. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he didn't invest in this. <laughs> All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is the text that I'm putting into Peter Jones's phone. And let's be honest, whatever happens tonight, he's gonna be okay. <laughs> The options of where Peter can hide are, well, he can go to his house in Barbados, <laughs> or he can put full prosthetics on and be a hairy biker in Jessup's. <laughs> All right, let's open with this. Not gonna lie, I've had a few drinks. <laughs> oh, God. oh, no! I think that sets us up nicely for the rest of the day. Just closed a ridiculously big deal. <laughs> You're gonna like this, Pete. You are going to love this. <laughs> Time to share the wealth. <laughs> 10K. <laughs> For the first 10 people. Who give me a good reason? <laughs> Why they should have the money. P J Kiss. Oh, you know what? It says you've had a few drinks, so I'm going to do the accidental C instead of the kiss. <laughs> Gold. Peter, <laughs> is it worse than you thought? Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's a hundred thousand pounds, Michael. That is, that is a hundred, yes. Yeah. No. Wow. Well done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, shall I send this text? <laughs> oh, God, it's going. <laughs> it's gone. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Jones, what an amazing sport. Look at that. Thank you so, so much. We'll catch up with Peter later on and see what replies we get. OK. My next guests are performing for the very first time ever on British television. <laughs> they are seven sexy flamenco dancing brothers who hail from España and don't have a shirt between them. <laughs> it's something for the mums. Los Vivancos!
And I would like to take this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to say that I have a revelation. <laughs> I am not Michael. <laughs> I am Miguel. <laughs> For years, I have been the masquerading <laughs> as a Chinese comedian. <laughs> but the truth is, I am your brother. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to find out who is tonight's unexpected star of the show! <laughs> yes, every week on The Big Show, we have surprised a member of the public who think they're coming to the theatre for work, but are actually here to perform. This is Adam Heapy. He is an electrician, and he thinks he is coming to the theatre tonight to fix an electrical fault. But that's not the plan at all, ladies and gentlemen, because Adam is known to his friends, family and colleagues as the singing electrician. His dream is to be a singer. Well, tonight, we're going to make Adam's dream come true because he's not coming here to mend a spotlight. He's here to perform in one. <laughs> so here's what's going to happen. Adam is on his way to the theatre right now. When he gets here, he'll be led into what he thinks is a room with an electrical problem, but is actually a fake corridor built from the outside all the way through. And then we're going to put a last bit on it here, and he's literally going to walk out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But this is the room. I mean, this electrician is going to get the shock of his life, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> OK, this has all been set up with the help of his wife, Emma. Emma, are you here? Emma. Emma, darling. Yay, Emma! I'm coming to see you, Emma. Hi, Emma, darling. Hi. Hi. Hello, Michael. Nice Hello. to meet you. Tell us all about Adam. He's an electrician. He sings everywhere. He sings in the bath, he sings with the kids, he sings at football, he sings in the van, he sings at work, everywhere. Has he got a good voice? Really good voice. And that, you, you agree with that? I mean, yeah. it's not just him. Because sometimes oh, in the bath, because yeah. of the echo, yeah. you can think you've got a good voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so amazing. No, he's, he's, he's good. So what does he like to sing? He sings a lot of James Morrison, Paolo Nettini, Craig David at the minute. But do you think he'll relish performing for this many people? Oh, he will. He'll love it. Well, that's what he we're hoping for. He'll love Amazing. it. Amazing. All love right, it. this is very exciting. <laughs> Lovely to meet you, Emma. It's Emma, Adam's wife! Yes! I'll see you later. All right, guys, it's on. It's on. OK, well, I can tell you that Adam is on his way, but then again, he is an electrician, so... <laughs> well, let's be honest, all men, all men here are qualified to a certain degree as electricians. <laughs> um, I count myself amongst you when the, when the fuse goes in the house, when the power goes, you know, my wife's watching the telly, you know, there's a blackout, she turns to me. I can't see her at first, but I know she's looking at me. With that look that says, darling, you're the man. You should be able to handle this situation. <laughs> and, uh, well, we all, we all do the same thing, I think. We go to the fuse box and we open it and we pray that one of the switches is in the opposite position. <laughs> and if it is, we feel pretty confident we can handle the situation. <laughs> That's basically it. <laughs> OK, ladies and gentlemen. My next guest is a bona fide music god. He sold a staggering 200 million records and counting. He also holds the record for the number of times he's said to the hairdresser, same again. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the sensational Mr. Rod Stewart's here. Yes. 
just have to hold on. You don't have to cry. No, not tonight. I know lately everything seems crazy. People walking by, just getting by. And I just wanna rest my head with roses laid out in my bed. They say heaven can wait. You and I will survive. Sometimes we lost and and I hope's far away. Hold the line, hold the line. So let's do best in the rain, to the heartache and pain. Hold the line, hold the line. It is time. What the? <laughs> oh. Oh, God, don't you ever, don't you ever do that to me again. <laughs> Just because I prefer the headset doesn't mean you need to do that. <laughs> bit of me hoped it was Rod. <laughs> so, let me just say that, um, Peter, it must feel awful not being with your phone. I mean, when I've lost my phone for just a few minutes, the tension, it must be excruciating. You're doing amazingly well, and I can confirm there have been some texts. That's all I... I don't know them, because I want to enjoy them with you, but I do know that over 30 people have already texted. <laughs> so that's all still to come. All right, I've got news. I've got news, Em. Adam, our unexpected star of the show, is in the building. 
apparently we've got footage of him arriving. <laughs> oh my God, there he is. Is that Adam? Is that Adam? Can you see Adam? Yeah. That's him then, with his workmate Steve, who is in on it. Yeah. OK, as I explained earlier, uh, this is Adam, of course. He's an electrician who dreams of being a singer. He thinks he's come to the theatre to do a job, but really he's going to be performing for all of us on this very stage tonight. He is now in an office backstage, waiting to be taken to where our fault is. Is he reading his manual on how to be an electrician? <laughs> So there he is with Steve, who seems, I think, almost too relaxed about the situation. <laughs> I think Steve obviously knew he was going to be on camera. Um, apart from that, and he, it looks like he's been rehearsing this. I think earlier today, Steve was lying in front of the mirror, working out his sexiest pose. <laughs> I'm not sure he had enough time to nail it. I mean, that is not a natural... OK, it's obvious who's in on it, and that's Steve, the creepy sitting guy on the left. <laughs> oh, he's just laughing at my joke! I thought, wait a minute! <laughs> I'm on fire tonight! <laughs> he can't hear me. No, Adam is obviously reading something hilarious. <laughs> OK, so very soon, Adam will walk down this corridor. He's no idea it's a fake corridor and what lies on the other side of the door. So let's go and have a look. There are cameras that should pick me up inside it. I can't tell you how, how authentic this looks. <laughs> so here I am inside the corridor and... You can't see a lot of it, but I can tell you that it's very much in keeping with the rest of the theatre backstage. Filthy. <laughs> so that comes through here, and then this door will be shut. There's another camera here. <laughs> it's like an intercom, isn't it? It's me. It's me, darling. Hello. 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 <laughs> Although sometimes you don't see the whole of someone's head. Who is it? <laughs> Got delivery! <laughs> <laughs> so let's do it. I think this is one of the most exciting things I've ever done. <laughs> OK, so let's get him up. He thinks he's going to come here to fix an electrical fault on the other side of that door. Hello again. Let's bring him up. Um, sorry, forgot to let you sign in. So That's do you right. mind signing in for me? No, no, and no, actually, no. do you mind just come with me and have a look at that fault? Do you mind? Just yeah. have a quick look. Just take that with you if you want. <clears throat> Does that make all sense, yeah? Yeah, yeah I'll just have a little read through. All right, well, actually, I'll leave that with you. I'll come back for you in a minute. Yeah, if you can, yeah, I'll just yeah. show you ahead, yeah. I've actually got many tools with me. It's all right, I don't think it needs a lot. I think it's quite easy. This way. That's where you come from. Uh... <laughs> all right, so you've come a bit of a distance, yeah. actually, haven't you? Yeah, it's not too bad. It's still like... Yeah, it's like day, yeah, yeah. And traffic was good? Yeah, it's Sunday. It's glorious. We're trying to come weekend. Um, actually, I'm just going to get one yeah. made. If you just follow these signs, see that, three and four, yeah. go to dressing room four and I'll meet you there. Okay. Um, I'll only be a couple of minutes. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah, come back a minute. Show. <laughs> no, no, it's OK. Keep the tools. <laughs> How are you doing, Adam? Not bad. Yeah. How are you feeling right bit now? Bit shocked, bit yeah. shocked. Where you... is the, uh, where's the fault, anyway? <laughs> no, it seems to be working. <laughs> <I'm happy. laughs> um, so you may have spotted, you've got Team Heapy over here. There they are. <laughs> Friends and family, and of course your lovely wife, Emma. Who... Well done. <laughs> <laughs> who has actually uh, set you up, and of course... Sexy Steve is also... <laughs> is also... <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> OK, so you are, hopefully, um, well, with your consent... 
<laughs> going to be something called the unexpected star of our show, because I understand that as well as being an electrician, you have a passion for something else. What might that be? Um, a bit of singing. You like, like to, to sing, sing don't you, Adam? Yeah. You like to sing. And you, have you ever performed in public before? Um, in front of mum and dad once upon a time. Right, so that's an audience of two. Pretty <laughs> big audience. <laughs> that's amazing. So, beyond that, um, do you fancy yourself as maybe performing in front of an audience? Yeah. Go on! Well, I just happen to have one here. So, we're going to send you backstage, and you have until the end of the show. We've got a team of people who are going to help you rehearse and get ready for this performance. We are so rooting for you, aren't we? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Adam, our unexpected star of the show! Grab your tools. <laughs> this way. <laughs> There you go. Adam, ladies and gentlemen. All right. This show, my next guest was one of the first names I wanted to perform. He's a comedian rightly becoming a huge star. I absolutely love this man, and you will too. Please welcome the fabulous Ramesh Rangan Nathan's here. Go on, Ramesh. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Correct response. Uh, I'm <laughs> very excited to be here. A little bit underdressed, but, you know, I'm here for the talent, mate, not the looks. I, I am <laughs> currently having some issues with my wife, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I love her very much, but uh, I'm having an argument because I don't want to take our kids swimming. And uh, I don't know if that's a problem for anyone else. It's not because I don't want to take them swimming. It's because I don't want to take my top off in public, do you know what I mean? I've got a, My torso is rank, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> I said to my wife, I do not want to take these kids swimming. I don't want to take my top off. You know what she said to me? Just wear a T-shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll distract any attention, wouldn't it? <laughs> One moron in the corner of the pool, wet T-shirt, clinging to his torso. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Just find this helps me glide through the water, yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. My mum's always having a go at me about it. You're fatty, fatty. Right, and... and... <laughs> Horrible, this woman. So, so I've lost some weight. She goes to me, yes, but turn to the side. <laughs> Disgusting, right? <laughs> I've got a hang-up about it. I think sort of my level of unattractiveness and my putting on weight is one of the main reasons I've never cheated on my wife. <laughs> It's not the number one reason. The number one reason is because I love her very much. But a close second <laughs> is lack of opportunity. I've <laughs> got three children. Uh, massively regret it. Um, I... <laughs> but what can you do? you just got to go, I'm never going to be happy now. Just... <laughs> My wife looks after our three children. That's her main job. That's what she does. And it's 2016, but my wife still feels like she's got to justify herself to me. I don't understand why. I know how difficult it is to look after those children. I spent two hours with them <laughs> when she went out shopping once, right? It was like a tripled-pronged attack on my sanity, right? It's like they planned it. It's like one of them went, OK, you go over there and take a poo in that corner. <laughs> you take a wee in that corner, and I'm just going to get butt-naked for no reason. I go to the cinema a lot. I go to the cinema. I go to cinema on my own. I think popcorn's a rip-off, right? It's not just the fact that it's expensive. It's the fact that they price it incrementally in a way that you are forced to buy more of it than you'd ever want <laughs> or need, right? And they treat it like rubbish. They don't care about it until it comes to you paying for it. You go up to the, the counter and I say, I'll have, a, I'll have a medium popcorn. I'll have a, one of those little boxes there. And they go, certainly, sir. That will be £5.80. <laughs> £5.80. It's all over the floor, mate, right? <laughs> you're wiping your forehead with it as you serve me. I just saw you fill the cabinet with it from your trousers, right? There's wheelbarrows full of it all around us. The foyer is made of it, and you're telling me it's £5.80. Well, yes, it is, sir. But for an extra 20p, <laughs> you can have 
ten times the amount of popcorn. <laughs> medium then mate there's absolutely no way I'm locked in I can't buy a medium now I'm strapped in mate give me the rucksack there's no way I can buy a medium now because I don't want to be that idiot that walks into the theatre with a medium and everyone else going oh my god look at this moron you got the medium it's only 20p more idiot I'm swimming through popcorn like Scrooge McDuck over here I went to Sri Lanka to uh, try and get in touch with my culture, right? And the problem that I've got, which is I can't speak the language, right? But I look like I definitely should be able to, right? <laughs> so I'd walk through the streets of Sri Lanka and someone would come up to me and go, and I said, I'm really sorry, mate, I barely understand Geordie. I mean, there's... <laughs> One of my uncles introduced me to his wife. He brought over sort of this slightly portly woman. He said to me, Ramesh, this is my wife. I said, sweet. And then he went, fat, no? <laughs> and then I looked at his wife and she going, yeah, yeah, fat, 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 fat. And then I realised my mum's not horrible. They're all horrible, mate. That's, that's, <laughs> that's how it is. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. You've been absolutely amazing. I've been watching for tonight. Robert Maggie Nathan, Ron, come on, Ron. Amazing. Thank you so much. Incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, So let's see how our unexpected star is getting on. The word is quite positive. He's not freaking out, and he will be here very shortly with his performance as our unexpected star of the show! <laughs> Go on, Adam! OK, Peter. <laughs> it is time, ladies and gentlemen, to find out what text Peter has received as tonight's excellent sport in our send to all box. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Jones. <laughs> OK. Earlier on, I sent the following text. Not going to lie, I've had a few drinks. Just closed a ridiculously big deal. Time to share the wealth. 10K for the first 10 people who give me a good reason why they should have the money. PJ. <laughs> Kiss. <laughs> C. Well, Peter, let's have a look at what's gone on here. So, I don't know, let's just start at the top. Um, Richard Griffin? That's a, just a friend. Just a friend. Oh, he's really sweet. This guy just says, go to sleep and give it to charity in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. OK. Um, Andy Mudge? Another friend. Another friend? Don't OK, sounds close. good. Not sure if this message is meant for us. Please confirm. <laughs> Nobody wants any money so far. This is good news this for you, Peter. This is very good news. Um, Rob Williams. Oh, my God, it's Robbie Williams. Is that Robbie Williams? Robbie, yeah. OK, well, he's gone, please stop drunk texting me. I love you, mate, but it's getting embarrassing. RW. <laughs> oh, come on. Jonathan Ross has come in, ladies and gentlemen. Ha ha, congrats. My dog needs new glasses. <laughs> Oh, my God! <laughs> Who is the biggest celebrity of them all? It's David Beckham. <laughs> oh, my God! I didn't know you were friends with David Beckham. I'm worried now what he's put. <laughs> You're friends with David Beckham? Well, I wouldn't call it friends. I know him. We know each other. How long have you known him? About ten years. Ten years? And you've got each other's numbers? It's amazing. Well, he's gone... Who's this? <laughs> Um, OK, Alan Shearer. Well, I've kept our little secret quiet for a long time now. <laughs> How about we make it 20k? <laughs> That's from Alan Shearer, ladies and gentlemen. This text is gold! <laughs> oh, fellow dragon Deborah Meaden, ladies and gentlemen. Deborah Meaden. This can't be you. Someone must have got a hold of your phone. <laughs> Tight. <laughs> <laughs> you 
This is brilliant. You are far too tight to give up any of your profit. I should know. Double kiss. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what a fantastic sport. Legendary Peter Jones. Brilliant. Thank you, Matthew. Are you OK, Mum and Dad? Yeah. Oh, yeah. well done. Thank you very much. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. It has arrived. <laughs> yes, it's time for a very special performance from our unexpected star of the show. Tonight, we asked an electrician called Adam to come to the theatre and fix a simple electrical fault, but there was no fault at all. We just wanted to give Adam the surprise of his life, and we did that. Because tonight, on The Big Show, we're giving him the chance to fulfil his dream of being a singer. He's had barely any time to rehearse, but now the time has come. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest has sold no records worldwide. <laughs> he hasn't had a number one in any country. But he has had several number twos in the last half hour. <laughs> Performing James Morrison's You Give Me Something, it's our unexpected star of the show. Go wild, ladies and gentlemen, for the singing electrician, Adam Heaping! Only stay with me in the morning. You want to hold me when I sleep. And I was meant to tread the water. Oh, but now I've gotten into deep. For every piece of me that wants you. Oh, another piece. Pops away. Well, should give me something that makes me scared. All right, this could be nothing, but I'm willing to give it a try. Please give me something. Someday I might know. Time along with me. I said I never bought you flowers. Oh, cause I can't work out what they mean. I never thought that I'd love someone. Oh, no, that was someone else's dream. Well, but you give me something. Please give me something, something I want. Please give me something that makes me scared. All right, this could be nothing, but I'm willing to give it a try. Please give me something, something. Amazing. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Congratulations. Did you enjoy that? That was unbelievable. Oh, that was that amazing. Was and what an amazingly appreciative audience. Fantastic. And the fantastic James Morrison creeping up. <laughs> Obviously not a fan of other people singing his songs. <laughs> What's going on now? <laughs> um, OK, so... Um, How's it been? How's the whole experience been for you? 
blown away. Yeah? Um, it was just fantastic. Start and you had absolutely no idea? No idea at all. <laughs> What's these clothes? Are these your clothes? I'm coming home with them, they're free. <laughs> I've had a touch. I love the shoes. They look really good on you. They suit you a little bit of suede. Why not? <laughs> Please take one more time. Adam Eby, who lost a massive electrical contract tonight, don't forget. Gutted. He thought he was going to be in. He's set for the year at the, the theatres in London, but we fulfilled his dream instead. One more time for the fantastic Adam Eby and, of course, James Morrison. Huge thank you as well. Thank you so much, guys. Next week, where somebody else will be given the surprise of their life and become the unexpected star of the show. Another celebrity, of course, will be playing centre wall in our centre wall box. But we've still got time for one more performance. You've already heard him tonight performing with our unexpected star and now playing us out with his new single, I Need You Tonight. Please welcome the phenomenal Mr. James Morrison!